fog has obviously been an issue so far this morning, but look, off to the horizon, we finally see Sable Island. So a transfer out there, we literally pushed up on shore, we got waves crashing in on the other side, our gear is soaked, we're soaked, but we're here. area here the winds coming across so we have to come so about here okay so that's it there you go beautiful and then it starts to derail but for me doing that that's super cool because that weather balloon is one of what close to a thousand being released at the very same that's time the very same time around the world around yeah. the world and yeah. so uh, that balloon then goes up, measures all that data, and that data is just essential for forecasting the weather. Uh, it's uploaded into all those forecast models that are then helping to predict the weather. Yeah, absolutely. So all of those big systems that come through and everything, that is all part of this, part of this, and this is just one, the, the very beginnings of it and the small aspect of it, but it, it's how it all comes together to make that big model, yeah. And this location, in itself is really unique because of course the Gulf Stream's right out that way. We've got the colder water on this side. This is a location where we're not getting a lot of data from this spot uh, other than maybe a passing ship here or there. So uh, this is a pretty important link, this island, don't you think? Uh, absolutely, yeah. So it's already up to 2,600 meters. Yes, or, or um, 27, yeah. 27, yeah. So um, it, does, um, it does rise quite rapidly. And then if we change to this, we can see the direction. So it's already um, 11 kilometers away from the station and it's only been in the air 10 minutes. Wow. Um, and, and again, that's a light winded day. Yeah. You know, um, uh, here the winds can be, can be great. have obviously been running the the, the island the park uh, here for a few years now why don't you talk a little bit about what you have been doing to to try and uh, to open it up to to more people uh, to, to let them to come here Sable Island became a National Park Reserve 2013 so since that time Parks Canada has been really trying to understand learning about the island the operations on the island um, how to protect it, developing the ecological monitoring program, archaeology surveys, and we've also been piloting, piloting experiences for people to actually come and visit the island. Without putting a human footprint on the island too much. I mean, it would be simple this morning if there was a great big, you know, dock there um, or wharf, we could just, you know, tie up. Uh, but why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, the reluctance to do that? 
Right, so you can see there's no visitor facilities here on Sable Island, and we've been developing protocols and putting uh, visitor use management best practices in place so that people who are coming are having no little, very minimal impact, and that we're able to monitor that impact. Uh, so we're able to adapt if we notice that there is anything. But we have very low visitation, less than 500 people um, the last couple of years. And uh, it's, as we, we found out this morning, it's a challenging place to get to. So it's, uh, it's not a place that you're, that's easily accessible. So today is a perfect example of why it is so difficult to get to this island. We couldn't have landed a plane today, it's too foggy. We came in, we had to switch boats on the way in and, and landed, it was a pretty rocky landing here on the beach. And Steve and I were just two of a dozen that made it in. There's more than 100 people on the HMCS Ville de Quebec that won't be able to get here today. The conditions are just not ideal and a little too dangerous to land here on the shore. So at least we made it. We saw some horses, I got to launch the weather balloon, but now it's time to go. They wanna get us off the island before it's too dangerous to do so. So Sable Island, it's been a slice.